Um, other than that, take a snapshot of the points you would like to make, critique, please. Let's talk. Uh, Dad, can I just ask, um, that stockholding versus service level, is that, um, is there some math you can run on that in your own business? Because, yeah, that, it seems complex. And you, you said it does um, differ between industries. Is there a resource that we can have a, have a look at that? Yes, so it's, if you go it's in, always a, a difficult conversation when sales are saying, you know, go and just keep more stock, you know, and this is very valuable in showing how much more stock we would need in order to increase service level by a percentage, for instance. So it, it all goes around your return on investment. Okay, if we remember what I said earlier, inventory can either be an asset or it can be a liability. If you're holding too much stock, it's holding up cash flow. So one of the one of the measures that you can talk through is um, availability of cash or cash flow, and basically is how how fast are you turning over your cash, and is your business impacted negatively? in terms of purchasing raw materials because money's tied up in stock. Um, and that can, that can represent itself in multiple ways. But an example is you have to go to the banks or you, you have to you increase your, your, your borrowings or your, in simple terms, your overdraft that your business has with the bank. Um, and then you're paying interest. So that could be a measure. Uh, in terms of determining where your optimal stock level is, that is relative to your current sales. Okay, what are you satisfying in terms of your current sales? And then what is the gap between your current sales and your targeted sales service level? And how does that fit into your strategy? Okay, I know I'm talking very broadly, Aubrey, um, but unless I understand specifics, it's very difficult to get uh, to give a specific answer. But what you can do is you can, if, if you look at within your industry, lo looking at general, um, at, at various measures, and consolidating those measures into a series of concise um, indicators. So, for example, are you do, do, is your company's cash flow fluid? Okay, is your company fluid? What is your level of borrowings? What is what is your percentage um, stock holding versus sales? Okay, and you can do trends because trends are very important. So you can pick up trending um, around those different measures in terms of your sales, and you can pick up rela uh, relationships. Okay, I, I do understand. And then okay, you, you're much clearer now, by the way. <laughs> yes, I, I had to restart my computer a few times, but uh, it seems okay. seems okay now. <laughs> cool. Oh, that's great. So yes, then, so there's. Sorry, carry on. Yeah, and then you mentioned 98% um, as a target for service level. Is that, um, yeah, is that a bare minimum or is that if you're achieving that, it's, it's really good? So <laughs> it, you, there used to be a, a time where 50% was good. Okay, and I'm and I'm not I'm not being facetious. If you go back to the 1970s, 1980s, 50s to 60 percent customer service level was regarded as as at the accepted norm. Now, if you want to be competitive in today's day and age, you need to target 98 percent customer service level. Okay. Um, if you and, look and at this, your, sorry, ask. Sorry, when you say customer service level, that that is 
whatever you determine to be important to your to your customer or is that purely like fulfillment like that so, first time on time yes yeah, so it, it's measured as uh on time and in full okay, okay. it's de measured in it's measured in terms of order fulfillment to your customer your customer remember okay. your customer has an expectation okay if they place an order for a hundred items and they want it delivered next week tuesday that is their expectation and if at the point of order you agree to that your you've made a commitment to your customer to deliver those hundred items by next week tuesday and you now need to make sure that your systems your internal systems can achieve that and we need to understand that our customer has made that commitment to somebody further down the line that they will deliver to their to their branches or to their cons or to the consumers so when we say we have a 98% of a customer service level that is generally 98% of our orders will be delivered 100% of the time Okay, it's not 98%, 98% of the time. Because to deliver 100%, 100% of the time is not really possible. Okay, your, your stock holding needs to be almost infinite. Am I making sense? Yes, 100%. Thank you very much. Okay, so it is, it, it's, it's, it's a balancing act. But... If you have a look at in terms of measures, if you have a look at, at if you've got a calculator on your cell phone, you can just do the calculation very quickly. A customer service level of 98% of the time measured as 98%, 100% of your orders, then it's a true 98%. But multiply 98% by 98% and you come out at about a customer service level of about 94 to 95%. That becomes your true customer service level. Thanks if you do that, the, you understand what I what I'm saying to you. And the same is in 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 manufacturing environments. There's a world class measure called OEE, um, overall equipment effectiveness, and it can be used in terms of your systems, where you multiply your availability by your productivity by your quality level. And if you if you want to achieve a 95%, which sounds quite good, okay? If you measure, if you multiply 0 0.95 by 0.95 by 0.95, do that calculation and you'll be shocked at where your customer service level comes out. And that's how we as organizations drive to optimal performance is you put those measures into place and then we create the structures and the infrastructure to support those measures because it doesn't help putting putting pie in the sky targets out there and not putting the systems in place to support them you're setting yourself up for failure Lesoko, have you any questions on your side? No questions, Steve. 